7654. We welcome all first responders to the first annual First Responders Appreciation Night. It's sponsored by our VFW Post. The officers and members of the Post just want to say thank you in a very special way to all of our first responders within the charter area of the Post. First responders, either paid or volunteer, are a valuable asset to our communities and offer a 24-hour coverage for police, fire, and EMS service. This event has been in the planning stages for several months. The unfortunate timing of last week's fire on Brock Street reminds all of us how lucky we are to have our first responders. Let us enjoy, uh, enjoy some good fellowship and refreshments and after a while, we're going to introduce our guests and some words of, words of wisdom from a few speakers. Just to remind you, the invitees for tonight's event, the Ashland Fire Department, the Gordon Fire Department, the Fountain Springs Fire Company, the Lavelle Fire Company, Locustdale, and all of their related auxiliaries and extra companies, a special welcome to the EMS for town, and a very special welcome to our new police chief, Jared Daly, Jr., He's been kicking ass for the last two months here in town. Sitting next to Jair is his mother, Patty, who was our representative for the Tri-County Chapter of the Red Cross. Also invited this evening were the elected officials of Ashland, Butler Township, and Gordon. And anybody else who was a first responder I happen to miss, thank you for coming. We have two speakers for this evening. The short one will go first, I will follow. <laughs> At this time, I would like to bring up our mayor, Ray Wallachavich, who was also a retired police officer of the borough of Ashland. Ray? I won't bend your ear, I'll guarantee you that. But I will say one thing, I'm, I'm proud of the VFW for sponsoring this, this shindig here for the first responders because uh, I can attest to that because I was a first responder for over 25 years. I worked with Sheriff Grudy there. One thing I'll say about first responders is that people do, do not uh, realize is that whether you're a firefighter, EMS, or a police officer, when you leave your house, you don't realize what you're getting into, you know what I mean? Because uh, just like with a police officer, he might be being called to a domestic with weapons involved. A firefighter might be called for a fully engulfed engulf fire, and you don't, he don't know what he's gonna run into. EMS is the same thing, you know, you really don't know what you're getting into when you're getting that call and it takes a special kind of person in order to, to fill those positions. I'd like to thank each and every uh, EMS person that's in this room and throughout the county. And for, I'll just give you an example. The fire we just had on the 22nd of March, I believe it was, back on Brock Street. Those firefighters didn't know what they were going or they were responding to because two things that happened back there. You had propane tanks that exploded, and you also had a house that was filled with weapons with ammunition that was going off. So, I mean, you know, they, it got, you got to give these guys credit. And I mean, the, uh, the firefighters are, they're volunteer. How many people would volunteer to go out there and put their life on the line. You tell me, because that takes that takes some doing. And I'd like to give credit to our new chief of police, Jared Daly. Jared's doing a fabulous job. I know for a fact he went back to that fire and he went up on that porch because he was told that there was somebody in that one house and he got blown right off of that porch. Now, I'll tell you, that I, I really, when I heard that, I really felt bad because I thought, that's all I need, you know, is to find out that something happened to Jer, and Jer's doing such a fabulous job here in town. You know what I mean? I gotta give it to him. And also, you know, I mean, it's like, it's just something that you just have to take into your heart with these first responders. Um, I won't talk much longer, but I'd just like to say one thing about first responders is that 
whether it's EMS, whether it's firefighters, whether it's police officers. The main thing is you got to, the only thing I can just say is that do your best and be safe out there. That's all I can say, you know what I mean? And I, I appreciate you letting me talk here tonight, but like I said before, I can attest to this because I've been at a lot of fire scenes, I've been at a lot of deaths when I was on the job for over 25 years, and I know what these guys are looking at when they go out there. So be safe out there. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Very good words. Before I begin, uh, the relationship between the police, fire, and EMS has always been one of the better ones here in Ashland Borough. Uh, we've always seemed to work together, and through the good and through the bad. And having Jer here again, uh, it makes our job a little bit easier. Now we strive for the old 24-7 coverage. With that said, my dear friends, I would like to speak about one thing, volunteers in two parts. What is, who is a volunteer? Who is a volunteer? A volunteer is a person who goes out and does good for the community without any compensation. That is the eyes of the Pennsylvania Workers' Comp. We are volunteers. We do something and do not get paid for it. It's, an, it's a testament to the long bloodline in our fire companies here in town and the EMS guys that far surpass the calls the fire companies get. And it gets more and more of a struggle to get members, volunteers, to do what we collectively are doing. Not too long ago, there was over 300,000 volunteers in Pennsylvania fighting fires and doing EMS calls. Would you believe that number has dropped down to 30,000? And the sad part about it, we don't have any replacements. Volunteers, unlike fire trucks and fire equipment, are sometimes not replaceable. A volunteer has to be groomed into it and you have to want to do it. We can go out and build the best, the biggest, and the finest of fire apparatus, but not having the bodies to man that apparatus, it is a losing battle. Many times we talk about this at our chief's meeting, and in a joking way, they said the volunteer shortage could be solved if we could figure out a way for the kids of today to take their little clicker in their hand and go to the work from the seat of their ass at home and make the fire truck go down the street and put the fires out. That's not going to work. We were built on hard work, very hard work, and distilled in this is leadership and dedication. Slowly but surely, you can watch that fade away. It is a plea that we make at many times when I speak throughout the organizations throughout the year, asking for the young people to step up to the plate and be a volunteer. There are many contributing factors as to why we don't have volunteers. Our small towns are fading. We don't have anything for most of our kids to stay here. They want to move on to a better life and a bigger life. Even the adults that are here do not have the time to spend as a volunteer. Young families growing up have it very hard. Both parents have to work. You don't have too much discretionary time to be a volunteer, to go for the training and be there. That's one of the contributing factors of our lack of volunteers. Most recently there was a, a, a program, not a program, but a study done by the SR6 rule and it involved politicians and people of the fire service. It has been published a couple months ago, and they're going to try and reduce or realign the training process that we can make it more attractive for the volunteers to come and we can retain the volunteers. Retention, retention, retention is a big problem. You also must consider, and Ray started to talk on this, fires, emergencies, and police calls, they don't punch a time clock. They don't have a schedule. It's gonna happen at any hour, night, or day. He did allude to what we just had up on Brock Street. One of the more fortunate things with Brock Street was the time of day. Had it been a few hours earlier, it would have been very bleak. As we say it, it was the change of shifts, the old time of day when things change. God love Charlie when he got there. What 
in the hell do I do? Where do you start? And that's not, I'm, not, I'm trying to be smart. Where do you start when you have five homes on their way to go to the ground? Where do you start? When the call was out for the second, third, and tanker task force alarms, that happened before I even got off the property in my office in Schuylkill Haven. I knew we were doomed. But the people came to show and play, not play, but they supported us. That was a multi-county mutual aid, which was probably the biggest in our history for a long time. The Tanker Task Force is a program all by itself. When you brought apparatus from most of all the northern part of Schuylkill County, all the way into the city of Pottsville, Northumberland County, Columbia County, all those guys came, guys and gals alike, with their apparatus and did the job. You might sometimes ask why we have to call so many fire companies. It's not for calling every fire truck in, but we need the manpower. Brock Street, by, by any means, was a challenge. We talked about it up there after everything settled. How does this rank in all of our time? Being the senior states, statesman next to Bill McFadden, who is probably the, the next to me being the oldest active member in this borough, we talked about all the big ones we had. And Brock Street probably has to be in the top five, close to maybe two. We have never seen that kind of destruction and so quick. We've had bigger fires, multiple more houses, but not like that. So it is a challenge. Our volunteers are dedicated. They will man our apparatus and equipment 24-7. And that is why we are here this evening, because the VFW took it upon themselves to say thank you. But before we say into that, we want to say thank you to the VFW for the veterans who put their life on the line in more times than one. My father was a WW2 vet. If you look around here in the walls and in this room, you have guys that were in Korea and mostly Nam, the godforsaken war. So we thank those guys for what they did for us. In return, they're home here on the home front and they want to say thank you. It has been my privilege for 20, almost 25 years, and racer behind me. Where, where, where'd you go? Right here. Oh, there you are. <laughs> we have been the voice and the sound of Memorial Day downtown at Mother's Memorial. And that has been an honor to do that. And I do that in memory of my father. And how I got into it, right there in front of you folks, you'll see a picture of a guy named Bill Farley. It's up on the wall. That man did the voice of Memorial Day for years and years and years. Well, one year, Billy Farley fell and broke his shoulder. My Uncle Alec Laponis called and said, I need you. My reservation was, I'm not a veteran, but I can do the job. He said, that's okay. Unfortunately, two years later, Billy Farley passed away suddenly. And not too many people here remember my Uncle Al, but he had a, he had a little bit of tact about himself. The next phone call I get is from him. He said, well, Groot, you're it. So with all that said, my dear friends, thank you to all the volunteers. We hope you stay with it. And anybody you know that can come up through the ranks, please encourage them. Now, I'd like to move on with the rest of the program. I have a couple of thank yous here. First and foremost to the VFW Club and Post for doing this. You'll see some, let's have a round of applause for those guys. Thank you. The uh, door prizes that were put up there, and some of the beer, a special thank you goes out to Dave Kessler from Yingling, and Butch Harris from Duradak provided a lot of the artifacts. Uh, the American Hose provided the mugs. No big deal, they were leftovers in the housing three years ago. <laughs> they were just collecting dust. <laughs> Enjoy them. You'll see a collection of toys up there. That comes from a store down the street called Toys Are Nuts. The true story is here, my friend. August 25th of 2016, we were a victim. That is our gift back. We are eternally grateful for everyone that showed up that day from Grace and I. And again, to anyone who has contributed any way at all to bring this evening off, and most of all, you people as the first responders. Have a good night. I don't like to say goodbye, but have a good night. Rich Harris will finish up here with some of the door prizes. Have a good night and sit back and enjoy the beer, but be safe on the way home. Good night.
our everyday heroes that are here, that, that, that are out there getting it done and putting their lives on the line, as Mr. Rudy said. I'd also like to have this toast and honor him, thanking him for speaking, and Ray, uh, you know, we're, this is something new that we're trying, and, and I think we made a pretty good success here to make this happen tonight. Uh, so hold your glass up, and to every one of you that are a first responder, whether you are or not, uh, it doesn't matter. Hold your glass up. Thank you for coming, and, and be proud of all these people that are out there doing what they do every day, putting their lives on the line for every one of us. Thank you. Here, here, here. Here, here, here. 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 Here, here.